Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is Dan and today we're going to be counting down my personal favorite movies of 2020. Now look, there were a bunch of films that I unfortunately could not see because I'm in South Africa and um, it's very hard to see some of the, the more indie films in this country before they release on VOD or um, onto Netflix or Amazon or whatever the case may be. So there's a bunch of films like The Father that I haven't seen yet, um, No Man's Lad, Maneri, I think that's how you say it, and um, there was another one as well. Piece of a Woman, I really want to see that as well. So there's been a couple that I unfortunately could not see and then obviously with everything that's happened this year, some of the huge big budget films also got pushed back. So like with the big upscale summer blockbuster sort of films, there weren't as many as we'd usually get in a year, but um, I still managed to get a pretty solid top 10 in my opinion. Um, and these are obviously um, excluding some of the indie films which could potentially make it once I've seen them. But obviously when I do see them, it's gonna be 2021, not 2020. Anyway, let's get into this video. So number 10, starting off on number 10, I have Doolittle. This film stars Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> okay, I'm, sh I'm joking. <laughs> I can't even like, I can't even act along because that was just so terrible. Doolittle is definitely not in my top 10. My real top 10 is The Invisible Man. And I was lucky enough to see this in the cinema before um, stuff got super, super crazy with the pandemic and all that sort of stuff. So I was really, really grateful that I did get to see it in the cinema because it has so far been one of my most memorable experiences in the cinema to this day and I haven't gone to the cinema that many times to be honest like probably four or five times but um The Invisible Man was absolutely great. Lee Winnell's direction in this film definitely subverts your expectations and um, that is backed by a really strong performance by Elizabeth Moss as well so I really highly recommend this film not your typical horror movie um, but it is really really good it's adapted from the H.G. Wells uh, original story of The Invisible Man and I thought it was just a really great modern adaption of this classic character and classic story. So definitely, definitely check that out. It's extremely underrated in my opinion and that's why it is number 10 on my list. Okay, and then at number nine on my list, we have The Five Bloods. Now this is a film by Spike Lee and it follows these four African-American vets who return back to Vietnam to try to discover the remains of their fallen squad leader as well as gold that they had hid during the Vietnam War. So it's a really interesting story. It's it's it, it, it's overlaid with some, some archival footage at times as well uh, and it is extremely, extremely impactful. And this film also has one of the best performances of the year and it's by Deloitte Lindo. If he does not get nominated for his performance, I'm going to be extremely disappointed because it was definitely one of the best performances I personally had seen this year, in my opinion. Um, it was absolutely amazing. And um, this film is something special. It's, it's really, really great. It's, it shows the, the sort of underlying racism that still remains to this day, um, as well as just this really, it captures this really great chemistry that these these veterans had with each other during the Vietnam War and afterwards. Um, and I think it's a really impactful film and it's a film that I actually am really excited to revisit sometime soon because I think it's really, really good. Okay, and then at number eight, we have House. And um, this film was amazing, absolutely amazing. I beeped out the title because I don't want to swear in this video, but um, <laughs> it's really, really, really good. So this film follows a homesick college freshman who ends up going to this party and ends up meeting someone that he ends up spending the night with. Um, and it just was a genuine surprise to me. This film was directed by, written by, and stars Cooper Rafe, I think that's how you say his name. So he did a lot in this movie. He's the, the leading, or I guess one of, he's, the, he's one of the leading characters. And then he also directed and wrote this film. And it was one of my favorite movies I watched this year, definitely. It's super, super, I guess, indie, if that's the right word to say. Um, so it's not like a high budget film at all, anything, but it has a lot of heart to it. it does sort of have a few tropes here and there, um, that are attached to these sort of films, but it definitely did subvert my expectations and um, I really just loved it. I had such a good time watching this film. It's a film that I can definitely just put on whenever and I know I'll just enjoy it. Um, I cannot wait to see what Cooper Rafe does next because I think this is a really, really great film um, that just really spoke to me. It had a lot of impact on me. I don't really know why, but um, I did relate to a lot of the things throughout this uh, film and um, I'm really excited to rewatch it sometime soon. Really, really great movie. I highly recommend it. Definitely, definitely check it out. Okay, and then at number seven, we have Palm Springs, which was just another really fantastic film of this year. Andy Samberg stars as Niles and Kristen Milioti stars as Sarah and, and Niles and Sarah are reliving the same wedding at Palm Springs 
and they're not quite sure how to get out of it. They keep reliving the same day. It's this endless loop. Um, it's definitely got a Groundhog Day feel to it as well. And um, I absolutely loved this movie so, so much. Um, really great comedy in this film as well. Some great comedic moments. Um, but it was just a really great sort of time loop film as well. I really did enjoy it. Uh, it, it. It definitely worked better than I thought it was going to when I initially went into the film. Um, and I just really had a great time with it. I highly recommend it. It's definitely one of the best comedies I've seen this year. Um, and that's why it's a number seven for me. Really, really great. And um, Andy Samberg and Kristen Meliotti's chemistry um, as the two leading characters just worked really, really great. And J.K. Simmons in the film was also really awesome. So yeah, highly recommend Palm Springs. Go check it out. Okay, and then at number six, we have The Trial of the Chicago 7. This was another Netflix film um, directed and written by Aaron Sorkin and it is absolutely fantastic. Fantastic. Really, really, really great. This film follows the story of seven individuals who are charged with causing uprising during the 1986 Democratic National Convention in Chicago, Illinois. Now, there's some just really phenomenal actors in this film, like Eddie Redmayne, Sasha Baron Cohen, who we also saw in Borat this year, Jeremy Strong, John Carroll Lynch, Yahya Abdul Mateen II, Mark Rylance, Joseph Gordon Levitt, etc. There are, there are so many good performances in this movie. It's really, really worth your time. Look, it is a bit I would say for me, sometimes slow at times, but that is not a bad thing. Um, it is a courtroom drama film, um, and it's also just a lot more than that as well. Highly recommend The Trial of the Chicago 7. It's definitely worth your time. Okay, and then at number five, we have the latest Pixar film, Soul. Um, this film was absolutely delightful. It really, really was. I don't want to say too much about it because um, I don't want to spoil anything because I, I went into it not knowing too much about it and it just really surprised me at how much I enjoyed this film. So this is another film directed by Peter Doctor um, who also did Inside Arts at Pixar and uh, I really just was blown away by this movie. Um, it's got a lot of soul. It's got a lot of soul. <laughs> Sorry, I'm gonna probably edit that out, maybe not, I don't know. But I'm um, really, this film is great. This film follows a jazz teacher who isn't necessarily satisfied with his life. He feels like he could have done a lot more um, with his time on earth and he finally gets this big break. Like he, he gets this really big opportunity and then unfortunately he dies. And that's all I'm gonna say about the movie. It is so, so delightful. It's some of the themes in this film I've been thinking about to this day. Um, it's really sort of changed my perspective on certain things that have happened, especially over this year. And um, I really did really love this movie and I cannot wait to watch it again. It's definitely up there with some of the best Pixar films in my opinion. Okay, and then at number four, we have Another Round, which I spoke about very recently in a review on this channel. This is another film by Thomas Venterberg, and I hope that's how you say his name. This film is a Danish film, and it follows these four high school teachers as they test this theory that uh, by having a constant alcohol percentage in your bloodstream, your life will improve. Um, very, very interesting film. It definitely, definitely surprised me in a lot of ways. I really liked how it didn't side with any opinions on if drinking's like a good thing or a bad thing and um, it does just sort of show you what happens to these characters um when they do test this theory and it has some really really great performances in it as well one of the best endings in any movie this whole year i would say as well um and Mads Mikkelsen, he's one of the leading characters in this movie. Another standout performance by him. Um, I really like seeing him doing Danish films every once in a while because he he has kind of been doing a lot more sort of English films recently. And um, I really do just like seeing him doing Danish films. And you can tell that yeah, he really gave this performance a lot as well. It's a really interesting movie and um, I highly, highly recommend it. It's definitely one of the biggest surprises for me this year. And that's why it's at number four. Okay, and then at number three, this might be a bit controversial for some people. I have Tenet by Christopher Nolan. Look, this film has issues. And when I saw it again after my initial viewing, those issues still remained. Still not that happy with some of the sound mixing in the film. Some of the character stuff doesn't really make sense the more I think about it. But hey, I still had a really, really great time in this movie. And I think it is a masterful, masterful work of cinema. Um, I really did enjoy my theatrical experience watching this film. It really, really is good. There are some issues with the film now that I look back on it and now that I've seen it again. But I still think it's really, really great. Um, John David Washington is extremely great in the movie. Although his character doesn't have that much depth necessarily. But his, his performance, I think, was still really, really great. Robert Pattinson as well was standout, standout. Super, super good. Um, I really did enjoy this movie. And it is a film that I think I'm going to sort of learn to appreciate more over time. Um, and uh, yeah, I really just did enjoy the movie. It's got a great score as well. Um, great cinematography. And I, I do really like the concept of the film. Although it could have been executed slightly better at certain parts of the film. 
That's all I'm gonna say. Go watch Tenants, it is worth your time, definitely. Okay, minute number two, we have The Sound of Metal. This film blew me away. It was fan fantastic. Seriously, seriously good. This film follows a metal drummer, okay? So he's played by Reza Mid, and he starts losing his hearing. Um, and this film sort of just, just takes you on that journey as he loses his hearing. And it is heartbreaking, and it's sad, and there's like some really heartwarming moments in the movie as well, and just some, you know, like, it's, it's great. It's so, so great. I really, really did enjoy this film. It made me super emotional at times, and, um, and I also just think some of the sound mix in this film is exquisite. It's, it's, it's really, really great. Um, and Riz Ahmed's performance in this movie is insane. Like, it's so, so brilliant. I really actually hope he gets some recognition um, for this performance. I think it was that, that good. We also have Olivia Cook in this film, who I'm also a really big fan of as well. And um, I think this movie was just fantastic. I definitely can see some people thinking it's a bit slow, a bit of a slow burn at times. But for me personally, I thought it was absolutely fantastic. And um, I think it's just was a really, really great movie. One of the more sort of intimate movies, I'd say, from this year. Um, and uh, I really did love it. It surprised me a lot, and that's what's at number two for me. Okay, and then at number one, we have, drum roll, please. I'm thinking of ending things. Guys, this movie, this movie blew my flipping mind. Like, I honestly loved it so, so much. Um, I went into it not really knowing what to expect because the trailer was so vague. And um, this movie just takes you on a really crazy journey. This film's got some of the best cinematography, in my opinion, of the whole year. I loved the score for this film as well, just the production design as well. Everything was, was so good about this movie. Absolutely, absolutely loved it. And this film was also just backed by some great performances by Jesse Plemons and Jesse Buckley as well. And um, I absolutely loved this movie. So the basic synopsis of this film is that there's this young woman who travels back to her, her new boyfriend's farm. And upon arrival, she starts discovering some really weird things that have been going on. Um, that's all I'm gonna say about this film. I bet there's a better synopsis out there. But um, this was, yeah, it was just honestly so great. It's directed by Charlie Kaufman, adapted from the novel, I'm Thinking of Editing Things, um, by Ian Reid. So I haven't checked out the novel yet, but this movie just makes me wanna read that novel straight away because I think this film was so, so strong. Um, it, it is my personal favorite of this year because it just did surprise me so much. It takes me on this really interesting journey as I watched it. And I just think the, the screenplay for this film is so strong and it's just backed by some really great performances. Um, and the cinematography might be my favorite of the year in this movie. So I'm thinking of ending things as number one for me. This, this I know is gonna be a movie that I'm gonna look back on from years to come and still just absolutely adore it because of how great this film is. Um, very poetic at times, very subliminal, and it's got a lot of symbolism in it as well. But I personally absolutely loved it. I think it's so, so great. So guys, those are my top 10 films of 2020. Wow, can't believe 2020 is already over. But guys, what are your favorite films of the year? Please let me know in the comments down below. I know this list is probably different to a lot of your lists, but that's why I want to know your lists because I want to see what your favorite films were. So let me know in the comments down below. Thank you guys so, so much for watching this video. I hope you guys have an absolutely amazing, amazing new year. Please stay safe out there during your celebrations. And um, I really do hope for all of us that 2021 is going to be a fantastic year. Thank you guys so much. Stay safe out there. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.